Hello, and welcome to RegoFix Tech Chat. My name is David McHenry. I am the engineering and technical manager here at RegoFix USA. Today, I wanna to talk about pull stud torque. What's the value that we recommend and what happens if you get it too tight? There are a number of pull stud manufacturers in the market today, and each one has their own value they recommend for pull stud torque. But what does that pull stud torque do to that tool holder? So to find out, what I'd like to do is we're gonna go over to the torque block and we are gonna assemble this tool holder with a pull stud and we are gonna measure the values of the TIR at hand tight, 20 foot pounds, the recommended value of 50 Newton meters or 36 foot pounds, 50 foot pounds, and then as high as 80 foot pounds. And we will get to see the values of TIR or the effect that each one of those have. So let's grab our tool holder and let's go to the torque block. Okay, so we are over here at the Torco block fixture that we looked at in a previous video. And what we are going to do is we are going to take and put on our pull stud retention knob ring. We're going to take our 40 taper tool holder, put it into the, the fixture, and then we are going to use just a standard off the shelf generic pull stud and thread that in. So the first value we are going to actually go measure is just that, hand tight. So let's take a look at what that TIR looks like. Okay, so here we have our hand tight or just threaded in pull stud. It's not tight at all. This will be considered our base reading. So let's take a quick run through here. And we are just a little over three microns. So really, really good results for a basic assembly with a carbide pin. So remember that we are right around three, three and a half microns. That's the number we wanna compare every other value to as we go forward in this video and we look at what happens. Okay, so now that we've measured that tool holder, let's actually torque this up to, well, let's say 20 foot pounds. So quite a bit less than the, uh, the recommended value. And to do that, we are gonna switch from our retention knob, which gives our recommended values, to just our standard scale. Let's do that. Let's set our scale at 20 foot-pounds. Let's assemble our wrench. And let's actually torque this down to 20 foot-pounds. Let's find it here in that little bit of value there is 20 foot pounds. So let's go measure that. Okay, so now we have our 20 foot pound pull stud torque and let's take a quick measurement. And again, right around that three to four micron range, uh, very, very good results, pretty much reading what the base holder was to start with. So very little effect at this torque value. Okay, so that value was with 20 foot pounds. So let's put the tool holder back in and let's go up to our recommended value of 36 foot pounds. So we're gonna move that, that out, put our chart in, put our needle right square where it says 40 foot pounds. And that's our recommended value. Now, obviously that's a pretty light torque we do recommend using something like a blue Loctite to hold that in. So let's go measure that. Okay, so here we have the recommended torque value for the pull stud, 36 foot pounds or 50 Newton meters. And you can see when we go through and test this, very little effect on the TIR over the base reading. So still really, really good, hanging right around that three micron range. So the torque value we have here, very little influence over the taper profile. That is why we have recommended this 50 Newton meters or 36 foot pounds. So you can see it does make a big difference. And wait till you see what happens at 50 foot pounds or as high as 80 foot pounds. Okay, so we've done a hand tight, we've done a 20 foot pounds, we've done the recommended torque. So let's actually go a little higher on this one. Let's go up to 50 foot-pounds. 
So not that much higher than the recommended value of 36, but let's see what that does. So let's torque that down. So there's 50 foot pounds. Let's go measure that. Here we have our 50 foot pound pull stud torque tool holder. So let's see what this does to the TIR. So really not that big of a difference, but it is about one micron over our base reading. So we added a micron. Okay, that's not that big a deal, but one micron is a big number when you think about AT3 tolerance. So it has an effect and we can measure that effect at this point. We are just barely over the recommended value and we can see it has a substan substantial difference or change that it makes in the TIR with just a small number. Okay, so that was the value at 50 foot pounds. So let's go up to that maximum value that we've seen referenced by other manufacturers. Let's go up to that 80 foot pound value and see what we actually get. This is a little harder to actually to, uh, to get there. So set the chart, have to hold everything in place and 80 foot pounds. So let's go measure that. Now this is the recommended value that we see a lot of times listed from pull stud manufacturers. So what's that doing to the holder? Okay, so we're back over here at the TIR device and we are gonna measure our 80 foot pound pull stud torque. So what does that do? So what I wanna show you first is you can see the holder is actually moving really, really easy inside the adapter. I'm just barely touching that and it's moving by several microns. Shouldn't actually see that. And when I rotate it, you can see it, it's kind of jumpy and it's jumpy because it, look how much it moves. It's not seated into the pocket anymore. We have totally deformed the back of the, the taper on this tool holder. And it's not gonna give you very good results. It's everywhere on this. It's bouncing, it's jumping, it's inconsistent. So not a really good value. And this is what you see in your machining centers. At 80 foot pounds or the old value, you have created a bulge on that taper. And that taper has an interference fit now with the spindle, and that's allowing that tool holder to wiggle or move back and forth very easily. So not the best option. Okay, pretty interesting results that we just got to see using the TIR measuring device and using our Torco block. So, but what effect does that really have and why is it important to you, the end user? Well. Today's machining centers are holding on to more and more of the tool shank because the machines are more accurate, they are more rigid, and they are going much faster. So by holding on to more of the taper length, they are actually getting down to the point where they're touching or they're holding the part that's being deformed by that pull stud. 20 years ago, you didn't have this problem. We didn't hold on to enough of the tool taper to get down to where it was being deformed. So, hey, that 80 foot pound value from 20 years ago, it, it was good. You didn't have a problem with it. The problem is today, we are holding that portion of the tool holder. So now that value has to be dropped down to something more reasonable where we're, we aren't deforming that taper. So if you happen to have a tool holder and you've assembled it wrong, don't worry. Pull the pull stud off the tool holder material will return to its normal machine shape. You can then put that pull stud back in without worrying about any damage you've done to that tool holder. So really important to make sure that you follow the recommended pull stud torque value from Regofix, 50 Newton meters, 36 foot pounds to get the best TIR possible out of your tool holder assembly. My name is David McHenry. Thank you for watching.